you, in real life, Rupert Everett, you did have a night out with Princess Margaret. Is this... <laughs> um, well, yeah, I did go out, out for a night with Princess Margaret. I went with the, to the theatre with her once um, in about 1986. Uh, was it just the two of you? No, and uh, her lady in waiting as well. And um, it was, a, it was <laughs> the only, I never got asked again, I must say. <laughs> I think, you know, well, she didn't realise there were two princesses there and one of them was me. <laughs> I remember at one moment I was kind of chatting away at Kensington Palace before, before leaving for the theatre and she got a cigarette out and she looked at me like this and I was chatting, 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 chatting and going on and then the lady in waiting was looking at me too and there was this Rolex lighter on the table. I just didn't realise I was meant to light it. I was... Rah, rah. And so then I suddenly thought she was asking me if I wanted a cigarette. I said, oh, don't mind if I do. And I <laughs> lit my cigarette and they all looked absolutely horrified and then I realised I had to go, shh. But um, she was great. She was... Um, she was like the kind of red queen in Alice in Wonderland. So she had huge black hair and, uh, you know, the, the Hanoverian bosom. And her breath <laughs> rattled like castanets. I don't know what was going on. She had kind of cigarettes about this long. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, when we were getting in the car, she said, Hey, you've got marvellous legs. <laughs> and uh, then she called me Leggy all the way. Leggy, do you mind if I grab you in the second act? And, <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to this little kind of drawing room in the in interval of the play to have a drink. And the loo was right off the drawing room. And I could hear... <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to have a pee, and it was going, bloop, 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 nothing was coming out. <laughs> I just couldn't, I was so nervous. And she then she banged on the door and went, come on, Leggy! <laughs> <laughs> so I had to spend the whole of the second night without having had a pee. <laughs> I'm sure this was Princess Margaret. <laughs> Well, it sounds like someone off EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> it was her. Uh, but, no, but, Greg, you've had a, a night out with royalty. Oh, briefly. Yes, yeah. Princess Anne. Now, you both look like you're having the best night. Look. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Not only was she clearly not amused by me, she's seen my act 15 minutes before that picture was taken. She clearly has no idea who I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, she thinks you're going to fall on top of her. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to you. Yeah, she said this is exactly this is what she said in its entirety. She said, a lot of ex-teachers become comedians. I can't see why. <laughs> That's brilliant. Amazing. I grabbed her and I threw her into the lights. <laughs> She, can I, for the record, she was very sweet. She was a very, very nice lady. Uh, but Miranda, you have had your own royal encounter, have you not? Oh, well, I did. I did. Yeah, I hosted the um, a section of the Jubilee concert. So there was a, a sort of party afterwards at Buckingham Palace. So I, I actually met um, Wills and Harry, which was very oh. exciting. But I completely died on my ass with Harry. It was so embarrassing because I said, I met him and I said, I was sorry about the silly flirting jokes I did about you. And he said, no, no, that's fine. And he said, it's a shame there's not um, music here and dancing because we could start rumours and dance. He was being really sweet and endearing. And then I said, as a joke, but way too dryly, so he thought I was being serious. I went, I can hear music. <laughs> years later and you forget and you're like pussy <laughs> <laughs> Aside from one sentence that she'd written on it, which was of the reasons why you think he should be Teacher of the Year, and she'd written, he's a well-good laugh and he don't make us do no work. 